it kind of harks back to what you said about pharmaceuticals. If you want to feel special, the easiest way to do it is to claim victimhood. But previously, people would only feel special by, as you say, striving for excellence. Well, the last thing that we wanted in our generation was to be perceived as weak or damaged. That was absolutely bottom of our list of things to do, right? Now, it, the pharmaceutical companies are thrilled because what's better than treating a real disorder forever, which they make money out of, it's treating invisible and non, uh, completely invented disorders. And if the disorder is invented, then it has no cure. So that is a money-making exercise forever. It's the perfect solution to a bank balance, really. So these, these pretend victims or, or victims of mental conditions are now, tell me this isn't true, Alexandra, becoming influencers on social media, turning their fake mental disorders into cash. Is that right? That's how you monetize the internet. That's, they get viewers and clicks and subscribers by putting on these performances. So some of them, I'll give you an example for viewers who aren't aware of how this works. Someone might prepare, uh, pretend to have a tick, so they like Tourette's syndrome, so they pretend to have these outbursts and they film them. Or they might have these multiple split personality disorders. So they'll introduce themselves in seven or eight different identities and then have conversations with these identities. And people come onto social media to watch this play out almost like some kind of uh, TV show really and they subscribe and they ask them questions and there's a whole culture built around supporting and rewarding this kind of behavior and every now and then a parent finds it and uh, comes online and drags their child off because obviously the parents are furious to find out that their kids are doing this but the way social media works parents might not be aware of it for years until they see what's happening. And by then it's too late. Finally, before you go, Alexandra, um, American researchers recently reached the startling conclusion that, quote, limited stress can result in cognitive benefits that may contribute to resilience. In other words, people who put themselves through challenges become better people as a result. Alexandra, are academics even, are even academics coming around to common sense in this field finally? Well, this is obvious if you think about what we are. We are animals. And so when we are stressed in situations that require immediate uh, thought to survive, we obviously up our game a little bit so that we don't fall off the cliff or get eaten by the passing bear. So obviously this translates to the modern world where if we're a little bit stressed, we tend to perform better and we learn better habits and it gives us clarity of thought. That is just our biology. But now we can't, we can't uh, test children because they might get upset by the exam in case they, heaven forbid, don't pass. And that has ruined the competition that is so healthy with our former society.